Daily Words of God Each stage of God's work in the flesh represents His work of the entire age and does not represent a certain period like the work of man. And so the end of the work of His last incarnation does not mean that His work has come to a complete end, for His work in the flesh represents the entire age and does not only represent the period in which He does His work in the flesh. It is just that He finishes His work of the entire age during the time that He is in the flesh, after which it spreads to all places. After the incarnate God fulfills His ministry, He will entrust His future work to those who follow Him. In this way, His work of the entire age will be carried on unbroken. The work of the entire age of incarnation shall only be considered complete once it has spread throughout the entire universe. The work of God incarnate begins a new era, and those who continue His work are the men who are used by Him. The work done by man is all within the ministry of God in the flesh and is incapable of going beyond this scope. If God incarnate does not come to do His work, man is not able to bring the old age to an end and is not able to usher in a new era. The work done by man is merely within the range of his duty that is humanly possible and does not represent the work of God. Only the incarnate God can come and complete the work that He should do, and apart from Him, no one can do this work on His behalf. Of course, what I speak of is in regard with the work of incarnation. This incarnate God first carries out a step of work that does not conform to the conceptions of man, after which he does more work that does not conform to the conceptions of man. The aim of the work is the conquest of man. In one regard, God's incarnation does not conform to the conceptions of man, in addition to which he does more work that does not conform to the conceptions of man and so man develops even more critical views about him. He just does the work of conquest among men who have myriad conceptions toward him. Regardless of how they treat him, once he has fulfilled his ministry, all men will have become subject to his dominion. The fact of this work is not only reflected among Chinese people, but represents how the whole of mankind shall be conquered. The effects that are achieved on these people are a precursor of the effects that shall be achieved on the whole of mankind, and the effects of the work that he does in the future shall even increasingly exceed the effects on these people. The work of God in the flesh does not involve great fanfare nor is it shrouded in mystery. It is real and actual, and it is work in which one and one equals two. It is not hidden from anyone, nor does it deceive anyone. What people see are real and genuine things, and what man gains is real truth and knowledge. When the work ends, man shall have a new knowledge of him, and those who truly seek God shall no longer have any conceptions of Him. This is not just the effect of His work on Chinese people, but also represents the effect of His work in conquering the whole of mankind. For nothing is more beneficial to the work of conquering the whole of mankind than this flesh, and the work of this flesh, and everything of this flesh. They are beneficial to His work today and beneficial to His work in the future. 
This flesh shall conquer the whole of mankind and shall gain the whole of mankind. There is no better work through which the whole of mankind shall behold God and obey God and know God. The work done by man only represents a limited scope. And when God does his work, he does not speak to a certain person, but speaks to the whole of mankind and all those who accept his words. The end that he proclaims is the end of all men, not just the end of a certain person. He does not give anyone special treatment, nor does he victimize anyone, and he works for and speaks to the whole of mankind. And so this incarnate God has already classed the whole of mankind according to kind, has already judged the whole of mankind, and has arranged a suitable destination for the whole of mankind. Although God only does his work in China, in fact, he has already resolved the work of the entire universe. He cannot wait until his work has spread among the whole of mankind before making his utterances and arrangements step by step. Would that not be too late? Now he is fully able to complete the future work in advance because the one who is working is God in the flesh. He is doing limitless work within a limited scope. And afterward, he shall make man perform the duty that man should. This is the principle of his work. He can only live with man for a time and cannot accompany man until the work of the whole era is concluded. It is because he is God that he foretells his future work in advance. Afterward, he shall class the whole of mankind according to kind by his words. And mankind shall enter into his step-by-step -step work according to his words. None shall escape, and all must practice according to this. So, in the future, the age shall be guided by his words and not guided by the Spirit.